Hi guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Raf. This is the first video of many that I'm gonna be making. Recently, I got back into sim racing. I noticed that um, while we have a lot of sim racers out there, a lot of them are just more uh, focused just on the racing part, which is totally cool. And I found myself helping out quite a lot of them through computer troubleshooting. So I decided to make a channel. If anybody's looking for troubleshooting tips and things like that, it can possibly help them move forward. Let's say for a person that's trying to get into maybe the sim racing aspect of things, maybe have tried on consoles before and found it to be cool but wished it could have into a PC environment. This would be kind of like the bare bones scratch, how to get started. This is kind of going over the parts. Notice, like, especially when I've been racing lately, like console games, it's not as simple as uh, um, popping the disc or you download the game, you plug in a USB port and you're good to go. Uh, this requires a little bit extra setup, but once it's properly set up, you have your own rig that you set up, which mine is from back there, kind of my, I don't have a computer set up, which is the one I'll be setting up for this. This is actually my uh, editor computer now, but just to get things started, uh, this is just gonna be the video regards to the computer I'm building and I have all the parts right over here to the left I'll go over each part like the case video card RAM hard drive on how to get it all together and let's get started first up this is the case the uh, NZXT this is the H510i model honestly it's personal preference I've never had a Y computer before, and I, uh, the interior of your Y with some RGB lights on it. If you don't like the look of this case, you can always look for a case. And what you want to be looking for is the ATX. Um, motherboards will tell you whether it's a mini ATX, micro ATX. But the bottom line is that you want to make sure that it's a uh, ATX. A mid tower is a pretty good size if you're just trying to keep it a little bit more simple. If you're moving the little the camera a little bit closer so you can take a look, it might be what it looks like. I don't know that that's just what you see it from the top of the case from the top better view and over here on uh get to it probably on this side right here see there's some co cooling uh vents over here from the case which is pretty nice touch from this case i mean nzxt makes great stuff uh but ultimately this is personal preference um so now let's get into the actual internal components of the computer uh, okay processor i'm gonna put it up close here and the processor I chose for this build is the 9700K. Do you take a look at the view? Okay, 9700K. This is a great processor, link in the description. All right, so this is your cooler uh, for the processor only. So basically the brains of the computer, it does all the operations and everything runs through that CPU, which I just showed. Um, if you were to overclock that, um, you would need a very good uh, cooler to get the heat out of it and out of the case in that sense. So you've probably seen before, maybe you heard of it, most of the coolers, they were just fans. They have a, a heat sink that's sitting on top of the processor and a fan that blows the air out of it. If you start overclocking things, that's not good enough. So this is the uh, Kraken um, uh, X62 model. Um, it's also from NZXT and um, this and it goes really well with the case uh, as far as location goes. I'll show you a picture of the case. Uh, you can see that the cooler actually sits right in front uh, of the computer. You see tubes in here that you can see that these tubes that are sitting, oh, I always get confused on this, sitting right over here. And what these do, they transfer the heat from the processor, which is on the um, on this piece right over here, carries over to the fans and the fans take it out of the case. Um, you're able to overclock your, your processor, but I just picked this because uh, compared to a fan setup, it's not as loud. You have software that you can change the lights uh, on this, which is kind of cool, and you match with the white and the RGB. So once the build is done, I can play around with that, which is kind of cool. And let's go over to the memory that I picked. All right, this is the RAM. So this is a um, Corsair. This is a Vengeance Pro RGB. Corsair has been making uh, very, very good PC components in general. White color RAM, 32 gigs on sale when I bought it. The two sticks of RAM, these will go onto the motherboard. Damn it. Ah. Okay, so motherboard. This is ROG Strikes or Strix. It's a Z390 gaming motherboard. Where your processor is gonna go. Cooler that goes on top of it. Everything connects to it. RAM will go right here. And then your video card is also gonna go here. Your storage. Now this over here is going back to when I talked about the case. Is an ATX size motherboard. It will come 
with all the proper tools and this is a very very good motherboard uh, the light keeps blaring here it's really annoying a lot of usb ports um you have uh wi-fi capabilities this is a great choice there's uh, headers for you to connect rgb lights and fans to make it look fancy and cool so this is the motherboard and uh let's go to the next item <laughs> If you don't have a video card that's powerful enough to be able to render all the frames, they get a very choppy um, gameplay and FPS for frames per second. You want to make sure that uh, your frames per second as high as you can. It's smooth. Uh, the target you want to go with is basically 60 frames per second uh, or higher. This over here is the EVGA RTX 2070, which is um, an extremely good video card. If you were to do like, for example, a lot of people talk in sim racing about doing a triple screen setup, uh, you have to remember that your computer would have to render three different monitors at the same time. Okay, you have to bring your graphics really, really low. I'm not trying to build something that is completely out of reach from everybody. I use this on a 1080p monitor, which is what the, um, I can't always write the display right there. It's an Asus a 49 inch uh, super ultra wide monitor. It's still 1080p, except that it's 227 inches next to each other. So the resolution is actually 3840 by 1080. And this card over here, well enough to be able to handle that. This is normally the most expensive part on a computer. The good news is that this is also upgradable. So that computer that I'm building, if one day you wanted to go ahead and let's say the next reiteration of GeForce cards from NVIDIA come out to be the 21 series, you're actually able to go ahead and switch that. And then you're still gonna be okay with your motherboard and your processor, 32 gigs of RAM, an easy upgrade. Let's move on to the next item, which is the storage. Okay, so um, the storage I even decided to go with for this build, it's um, solid state storage. There are no moving parts. This is the newest generation of solid state drives. It's a one terabyte storage. I find it good enough. I don't plan on installing a lot of things into my main drive. That brings me over to this guy right over here because these guys have gotten a lot cheaper. And uh, this is an old hard disk drive. Uh, and now they're great for storage. This is a 3.3 three terabyte drive. So basically the reason why I have this is that this is where I want to put all my games and plan to have these two. This is going to be my main Windows 10 installation drive and this will be my storage. So let's go ahead and move on to the last item of this computer. Can you Come on. Ugh. Okay, so at last but not least, so I spoke about all the computer parts. I talked about the motherboard, the case, the graphics card, the RAM, the storage, the CPU but you well, i need to power this thing so this is going to be what's going to provide all the power to everything inside that computer case and this is a power supply unit esu she was a corsair i'm trying to keep that white thing that i was thing that i was kind of trying to do uh, i picked this white one again corsair uh, they've been making great uh computer parts for the past let's say probably a good decade nowadays computers have gotten a lot more energy uh efficient and be well enough for what i have already but that being said to what i want to do is as I'm building, I'll take a few pictures in between so you can see the steps that I take when I'm building this. And I'll talk about my rig as far as racing, my wheel, my pedals, and shifters. Let's get into the build first and then we'll go on that afterwards. So just before we get started, I decided to do a small change on the build. Instead of using the three terabyte Seagate drive I had, I decided to instead use a two terabyte SSD drive. The three terabyte drive was kind of bottlenecking the system a bit. The one I got was a Samsung uh, two terabyte SSD storage instead. Made it a lot faster to load the games. And let's take a look at the system.
So there you have it guys, that's the final build. I am really happy with the way the computer came out to be. Um, it runs very quiet, all the components are working very well. I run a few torture tests on the system, I have had no issues whatsoever. I've tested a few games on it, Project Cars 2, Assetto Corsa Competizione, it's been working flawlessly. Uh, on a future video, very soon, I'll be posting a video of the, the gear that I use for the sim racing, so such as my wheel, pedals, shifter, cockpit, more like a vlog video so you guys can see what I use. I go into a couple of videos so you guys can see how all that incorporates into the system other than that if you like the video hit the like button for me it's down below if you would like to be notified the next time i post a new video you can also go ahead and hit that subscribe button in the bottom corner i'll see you guys next time peace